Hi guys, I'm Dennis. Welcome to my channel. And in today's uh, plant spotlight episode, I'm going to show you this very interesting plant. Uh, this is the blue oil fern. And uh, as you can see, it is uh, blue. Its scientific name is Microsorum thailandicum and uh, sometimes I think it is also confused or mixed up with uh, Microsorum stearii. I'm not sure whether are they the same plant but there is a lot of arguments and uh, disagreements over the ID. Or it could be stearii is simply an older name as uh, thailandicum is uh, actually named much more recently. Uh, I think in the year uh, 2001. This species is native to Southeast Asian countries like China, Vietnam, and of course, uh, Thailand, as its name uh, suggests. The blue oil fern is an epiphyte, so meaning it actually grows by climbing up a tree or another plant, or it could be lithophytic, meaning it grows on rocks or the crevices between rocks. The style of this fern is definitely the fronds or the leaves. Uh, check out this uh, very blue, very metallic looking leaf uh, that is reflecting all this light, really shiny. And uh, yeah, this video is not filtered. I'm not using any special light. I'm just using uh, natural light from the balcony. So you can see how blue this uh, fern is. I got this fern about three months back, uh, so it has been with me for a short while. Uh, but during these uh, few months, I've lost some of the uh, original leaves. I think about two or three of them. They just uh, turned yellow. Um, not sure why. And lost all its colors. I take it that this plant was just uh, trying to acclimatize to my conditions. Um, yeah, but since then, the other leaves uh, have been uh, growing pretty well. In fact, I think they have grown uh, longer. Uh, and also, I've got some uh, new growth uh, as well. There are two new leaves. Look at this uh, baby one, which is uh, still green. And uh, this is the other one. So I suppose uh, they will turn blue as uh, they mature. Unlike most ferns, which have very thin leaves, the leaves of this uh, blue oil fern is uh, pretty thick and uh, succulent, uh, and it also feels pretty uh, leathery. And the shape and the length of the leaves uh, kind of reminds me of those uh, pendant anthuriums, for example, Anthurium vitarifolium. And because the leaves are thick, it also tells me not to uh, overwater this uh, fern. Uh, even though ferns generally do like uh, in uh, moist uh, condition. The longest frond, uh, which is about 20 cm. And uh, this is pretty long as well. But look at the fork uh, tip of the leaf. Kind of reminds me of a snake's uh, tongue or a lizard's tongue. Okay, let's talk a little bit about its care requirements. Uh, first, watering. Like I mentioned, like most ferns, uh, this one doesn't like to dry out. It likes to be uh, a little bit moist. Uh, but I wouldn't go to the extent of watering every day, uh, like my bird's nest fern or my uh, Boston ferns. Um, I only water this about every five to seven days uh, because it doesn't really get a lot of light. So when I water, I water thoroughly. Uh, make sure the water comes out from the drainage holes. And um, yeah, lately I've been trying to experiment with uh, bottom uh, watering for this fern. I'm not sure whether is it beneficial, uh, but yeah, that is something I'm trying to experiment. There's any crazy levels of humidity, um, but being a tropical plant that comes from the tropical jungles, uh, Definitely you appreciate uh, higher levels of humidity um, But I don't have it and it seems to be still doing just fine uh, With all this new growth So I would say that regular uh, ambient humidity will do okay for this fern 
So I tried to augment the humidity levels by giving it a top dressing of uh, sphagnum moss and I will uh, mist this uh, every day or every two days to just uh, lock in the humidity and hopefully that helps. Like watering, light is a critical factor to the success of this fern. Um, as you can see, it is not green, so it doesn't really need a lot of bright light. In fact, it is in a pretty shady area that uh, has a low to medium light as uh, it is sitting in this uh, corner of the plant shelf. Uh, yeah, they get some light from the balcony, but not crazy uh, bright direct light. So why are the leaves blue? Um, researchers have found that the blue color is actually caused by the fibers of a chemical called cellulose uh, in the cell walls of the leaves. And uh, they interact with the light to reflect intense blue and green colors. It's possible that the iridescence of the leaf surface is how the plant uh, protects itself against uh, high light conditions. And the iridescent underside reflects the light uh, to improve the efficiency of photosynthesis. So in order to maintain the blue coloration of the leaves, uh, keep it under low light, uh, definitely no uh, bright light and direct sun is definitely a no-no. For potting medium, uh, to be honest, I'm not sure what's in there because I have not reported this uh, since I got it. Uh, I would suppose it's uh, something that is pretty uh, airy and porous. Whoa, actually that is a lot of uh, sphagnum moss. <laughs> okay, I don't really want to disturb the roots, but um, I can see that there's a lot of perlite and I think some chunky uh, yeah, potting medium. So it should be pretty well draining. But I think you can just give it a more organic uh, potting medium and uh, amend it with uh, maybe palmers or perlite uh, and I think it, that should do. I don't have any pest issue on this fern so far and I don't think I'll get uh, any pests from the look of it. Um, somehow I think these leaves are really smooth and uh, seems to be pretty uh, pest uh, free. And even if they are pests, I think they can be removed uh, really easily. I like to give the leaves a good wipe down every now and then uh, to keep it nice and uh, clean and shiny. And this will also help to prevent uh, any pest uh, infestation. I've only fertilized this fern uh, once about uh, a month back in March with slow release fertilizers. I did not give it a lot, just a few bits because I suspect it doesn't really need to be fed uh, that frequently, especially it's under pretty uh, shady uh, conditions. Okay, for propagation, one method is of course to propagate uh, using the spores uh, of the fern that uh, it produces. Uh, okay, mine is still not mature yet, so it doesn't uh, have any spores on the undersides of the fronds. Uh, but when you see them, the, the yellow spores, you can actually just scrape them off and leave them aside and then subsequently uh, pot them up uh, in soil or potting medium and soon, pretty soon you have uh, baby ferns. And look at the form of this plant. Uh, I suspect that you can actually propagate by division. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, just uh, chop out the plant right in the middle or into different parts uh, with their own root system and you can actually pot it up uh, individually and allow the cuttings to grow into their own plants. One of the leaves uh, drop off and I just uh, put it in this container of uh, water with this uh, Raphidophora tetrasperma cuttings. Definitely, I'm sure this will not root. But anyway, it has been only a couple of days. Uh, yeah, but I don't think anything is going to happen. This leaf is still looking pretty good. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, just trying my luck. Thank you for watching this episode of Plant Spotlight. I hope you have found this uh, fun and useful. Uh, if you do, uh, do consider subscribing to my channel. And also let me know what other plants would you like to see uh, for this Plant Spotlight series. I don't have that many plants, but yeah, just let me know. 
Uh, meanwhile, stay safe. I will see you again in my next uh, episode. Uh, remember to show your plants some love.